Hi, I want to talk about a serious topic, a very serious topic. Um, the other day, a young lady by the name of Makia Bryant was shot and killed by a police officer in Columbus, Ohio. There are already protests going on in Ohio and in other states. Um, and, you know, they're the, the normal defund the police, ban, get rid of the police, you know, all these things. Um, I, I, I hadn't wanted to look at this, but it's become a big thing. And um, <clears throat> the other cases that I've looked at, some in some of the cases, the police officer acted correctly. And in other cases, the police officer was... In act, uh, did not act appropriately, such as in the case of uh, George Floyd. Um, but what we're seeing is that, oh, here's another innocent woman, or black person, I should say, um, who has been killed by another cop, and uh, this has got to stop. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about how many whites are shot by cops. I'm not going to talk about how many whites are shot by black cops. I'm only going to talk about this situation. <clears throat> I saw that there was some police footage re released by the police uh, from the uh, cop, uh, from the cop's own body cam, from another cop's body cam, as well as from a car. Um, so that's three different viewpoints. Unfortunately, the news reporters are censoring the videos so you don't see the acts of violence, um, or some of them at least, <clears throat> out of respect for the family and the victim. Um, which, to me, that... <sighs> okay, from my perspective, thinking how I would feel if this was a very personal thing for me, I would be asking, well, why aren't they showing this? What are they hiding? I wouldn't be asking, well, how does the family feel? I would be feeling like, oh, the police, sorry, the news are concealing something by not showing the actual act of um, the shooting. <clears throat> um, one station actually, I think it was Microsoft, actually... Once the uh, Makia started her first attack, because there were two in, that are recorded in the video, um, they stopped it. They cut that. And it's, it's really frustrating. <clears throat> so, I can only talk about what was shown, because the, the naked footage hasn't been released, or at least I wasn't able to find it at this point in time, on the evening of the 26th of April. Here's what I saw, Okay. The police officer gets out of his car, he draws his gun, which leads me to think, okay, he's aware that there's a violent altercation going on, that somebody may be armed and dangerous. <clears throat> so he's pulled his gun. Why didn't he pull his taser? Well, I don't know. Did he not have a taser? Did he not think that he should use his taser? Was he, um, what's, what's the policy? I can tell you this, and I'm not going to release the, the officer's name at this point because I don't have his permission. But I, previous to this all happening... Um, I spoke to an officer here in Ohio, where I live, and he said, I asked him, why don't you just shoot them in the legs? Because in Indonesia, officers are trained, shoot the criminal if possible in the leg. And it's, it, you'll see a lot of that on the news. A guy limping along with, with a bandage on his leg because he's been shot in the leg. And I think that's what police officers should do here too. Um, but he said, well, you know, in Ohio... We're not trained to shoot in the leg. We're sh trained to shoot for the center mass, which is the, you know, the, the torso, okay? <clears throat> That's what we're trained to do. Um, I don't personally agree with that. I understand the logic behind it, but I don't agree with it. Because most people, when they're shot in the leg, it's over. They're not going to fight anymore. Then um, there's also the, the question of what kind of a mentality are the police being taught? I've seen videos where police trainers teach police officers to have a mentality of if it's you are going home or I'm going home, but the other person's going to be a body bag, it's going to be you in the body bag, not me. <clears throat> and that is a very dangerous mentality 
because it's, in effect, giving police officers license to shoot if they feel they, you know, if they feel the situation warrants it. Now, <clears throat> um, you look at the situation with the, the gentleman um, who was shot seven times in the back um, <clears throat> by police, that's very questionable. You look at the other situation where a man was holding a knife and then started to lunge at police who were about 10 feet away, and you think, well, why did they shoot him dead? <clears throat> well, actually, I was questioning that myself. I thought, oh, my God, they shouldn't have done that. Um, and then I, I happened, my son happened to be watching Mythbusters, and uh, the two guys on Mythbusters, they tested the theory of whether or not a person from 20 feet away with a, a knife could successfully attack somebody who has a holstered weapon, <clears throat> a holstered gun, that is. From 20 feet away, uh, I think it was Jamie was the was the the attacker was not able to attack the other guy um, whose name I forgot. <clears throat> so the bald guy was attacking the uh, the other guy, right? And that bald guy's name is Jamie. From 20 feet away, he could not successfully knife uh, Adam. That's his name, Adam. <clears throat> but somewhere around 15 to 17 feet, he actually was able, at a dead run, to knife Adam before Adam could draw his pistol. So if, at 15 or so feet, we'll say, we'll say 15, okay? If at 15 feet, a slightly overweight, slightly out of shape, um, older guy can knife somebody, I think... This is something that needs to be taken into consideration. <clears throat> okay, so we get back to Makia. He, he gets out of the car with his gun, the police officer. He turns toward where all the people are grouped on a uh, driveway. So there's a, a, there's a house on this side, and in front of the house there's a car parked, and then there's another car in the driveway kind of sticking out toward the street. And, it, and then between the garage door and that second car, there are, there's a knot of people, and then there, against that car on the left side, there's a lady in pink. Okay? From that knot of people comes a large woman who is retreating away from Makia. And if you slow down the video, that you can see that Makia is... Okay, let me just let me make this real, okay? I don't know what kind of a knife it was, but Makia was holding the knife like this, and she was swinging it like this at the head of the other woman. The other woman, to escape the attack, fell down onto the lawn, at which point Makia, for whatever reason, and maybe because the police officer was standing right there, I don't, but I don't think so, because if it was me and I saw a police officer standing right there, I'd be like, oh shit, drop the knife, right? But no, she didn't, she didn't go after the woman who fell to the lawn. Maybe she thought she'd get her or something. I don't know. Um, she didn't, in fact, uh, pursue any kind of attack against that woman. However, there was a man that apparently came out of the group too, um, or was near the group, and as this woman on the ground was starting to get up, that man kicked her in the back of the head. So that sucked, right? <clears throat> Makia instead turns, does a 180, and it goes right for the woman in the pink clothes against the car. Now, the woman, this is going to be hard for me to show you, but I'm going to try to show you. So the woman in the pink car sees her coming, and she's, so Makia has her knife again like this, and she's getting ready to go like this. She's, she's, she's pushing against the woman with her arm to keep her against the, car as she's winding up her body to swing at this other woman in pink. The woman in pink, she sees what's happening. She sees the knife. She turns her body, brings her leg up to try and protect herself. And that's as much as we see from the video because the rest is cut. <clears throat> what does that tell you? She attempted to knife one woman in the head, failed, and then went after another woman. 
what was this officer supposed to do? He had sec no, he had microseconds to make a choice. Should I try to intercede by tackling the woman with a knife? Should I drop my gun, pull out my taser, if he had one? Should I um, shoot? Should I just wait till the woman's been stabbed and then do something? Okay, so let's go. Let's go um, and look at the last one first. Obviously, as a police officer, he's supposed to protect the people there. And for him to allow Makia to stab the woman in pink and then do something would obviously have serious consequences both for that woman in terms of her health, maybe her life, and for him as a police officer, he would obviously have to undergo some kind of a formal review or whatever because he didn't act. Okay? <clears throat> what about if he dropped his gun and grabbed his taser? Well, what if he doesn't have a taser? What if he drops the gun and it discharges? <clears throat> Probably not going to happen, but it, who knows? What if he drops the gun to pick up to get his taser out and he's too slow? Because it does take some time to get a taser out of a closed holster. What if he drops the gun and the woman on the ground picks it up to try to shoot Makia? Then he would be charged for that too. So he could have holstered it instead. But again, this is all wasting time, right? He doesn't have enough time to holster his weapon or drop it and pick up or pull out the taser. So that's not really an option either. Should he try to intercede directly by tackling Makia? Well, first of all, I don't know how big this guy is, but Makia is a hefty young lady, okay? She is substantial. It would not be necessarily easy. He doesn't know how strong she is. He doesn't know if she's on drugs that would make it even more difficult for her to restrain her. Um, he has not got enough data to know whether he can uh, win. Not to mention, she's holding a knife. She could just as easily turn that knife on him as on the woman in pink. So, that leaves shooting, which is what he did. Four shots, Makia died. From my perspective, I'm sorry that Makia died. I'm sorry that she had to live in a foster home, and that probably contributed to her delinquency, her, her violent behavior. Um, but at the same time, as regrettable as it is, I think the police officer, given the way Ohio police officers are trained, I think he did the right thing. He saved that woman's life. Yes, he took another life, but that woman, Makia, should not have gone after the woman in pink, especially the cop with a gun drawn standing right there. It's like saying, please kill me. Okay? I don't mean to disrespect Makia or her family. I'm just giving my perspective, and I know you're going to say, oh, you're a racist, you're a white. No, I'm not a racist. Okay? Get over it, right? I'm just trying to look at this from a logical, non-emotional viewpoint to try and figure out what should have happened. What should have happened is Ohio should be training their police officers differently. But what the officer did under the circumstances was the best option that he had available because it happened so quickly. It was just a matter of probably three seconds, four seconds from the time she put the one woman, she went after the one woman to the time she went after the second woman. It was very, very fast. I challenge any of you, gamers included, to react fast enough to have prevented the woman's death without killing Makia. Okay? It's so hard being a cop. I'm not defending cops' behavior. I'm not defending racism at all. I absolutely abhor racism and other forms of discrimination. I have experienced lots of forms of discrimination, including ageism and religion and race. But please, if we're going to talk about unjustified or even malicious murder by police, let's separate 
fact from fiction. Let's look at the real cases where it is either not clear-cut or it's clearly a case of police violence that's unjustified. And let's take all these other ones and not blow them out of proportion. Because all that does is it leads to protests, and then there will be the agitators who will turn it into a riot, and then all kinds of nastiness happens, like what happened in Kenosha with Kyle Rittenhouse. Is that what you want? Please, let's take a deep breath. Let's calm down. Look at these things carefully and objectively. Don't allow ourselves to be manipulated by people on one side or the other. Just let's work together to solve this problem without unnecessary problems being added to it. I apologize again if anyone finds this offensive. I'm just trying to give my honest opinion. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.